Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we are going to talk about weathered realistic stone. This is something I bang on about a lot. It's very important to me because when I see a lot of people do stone, it doesn't look like stone. Let me see if I can explain. And, and we're gonna go through and do some here. So what have I got here? Well, I've got a display base I'm working on that's got some stone. It's not real stone, obviously. It's some kind of bones, rubber, plastic. And then I've also got some Nuln Oil, some Athonian Camo Shade, some Agrax Earth Sage, some Seraphim Sepia, some Oiled Earth from Vallejo Model Wash. There's a bunch more. We, we, can, we could go on and on. It's not really relevant. Point is, I've got a bunch of washes, right? We could have inks, we could have shades, we could have some glazes, whatever we want. And we've got our stone. What have I done here with this stone to get to this point? Well, I did some zenithal highlighting, right, to start out with. And then I did the steps that you saw in the fully preparing your miniature video. So basically I washed it, I dry brushed it, and then I've actually just washed it again. Just I ran the black over the whole thing, the, sorry, the Vallejo Mono Wash black over the whole thing. Okay, this stuff over the whole thing. Um, and that's it. Now, we could stop there. And, you know, this looks kind of like stone. Like, it's gray. It looks fairly stony. I could have not done the last wash. The problem is, is that it doesn't really look like stone. And the reason for that is because it's far too clean. It's all gray and white. This looks like stone in a black and white movie. So, next time you're outside and you look at anything natural, be it stone or wood or whatever, really stop and look at it. What you're going to see is it's got all sorts of tones in it. Browns, greens, reds. Why? Because it's outside, right? Unless the statue was put up yesterday. Stone is never clean. Things that sit outside weather. Rain has dirt and particles of earth in it. Wind carries dirt and dust and stuff like that, right? Animals walk across it. Everything happens. It's outside. It gets weathered. Hence why weathering is such a big deal with big vehicles and things like 40K and stuff like that. Um, so what we're going to talk about is how to take your stone from something flat and boring and black and white and really take it up. So the first thing I want to do is, um, and, and by the way, the best part about this is it's simple. It's really, really simple. There are two techniques to producing great looking stone. You ready? It's called dry brushing and washing. You know how to do both of them, I promise, because it's the two easiest techniques. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some white on my palette here, just some regular old white, just straight dead white. And I'm gonna get out my, my paper towel for dry brushing. I'm gonna get some of that on my big dry brush here. And as usual, we're just gonna work it in. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just go back through. Let me scoot all these back so they're not in my way. I'm not knocking them over. Oh, get out of here. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in, I'm gonna, as always, test. And then I'm just going to go ahead and do some light dry brushing over the whole thing. Now this time, unlike previous times, I am pushing pretty hard. But I am still pushing in a particular direction. Most of my dry brushing is going down because I want to catch, in the horizontal places, it doesn't really matter, just get it on there. But when I'm dealing with the walls here, I'm pulling down because I want the, that's the angle I'm trying to go at. Brush control is always a thing, doesn't matter what you're working with. Whether you're dry brushing or washing or whatever, always think about the direction your brush is going. I'm not actually gonna paint the back of the wall here because I'll eventually just black all that out. Okay. So, there we go, what do we got now? So now we popped out the stone a little bit. And again, you could, if you want, stop right here. But if you're watching this video, it's because you want to take your stone up to the next level, not because you want to keep doing the same thing. All right, done. All right, so let me rinse this off so we don't get un so we don't get dry paint in my dry brush. Don't care that much about my dry brush, but I still wouldn't rather ruin it quicker. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to start mixing in some of these colors to get this looking more realistic okay so we're going to start with our uh we're going to start with our agrax agrax is a wonderful tone for this it's got it's a very black brown um, very natural color so we're going to shake it up and we're going to find a big crappy brush that's nice and big this ridiculous craft store garbage brush that i keep over here for just such purposes 
I'm just going straight in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start kind of working it down. And I'm going to try to follow the cracks and the crevices and things like that. Places where this stuff would collect. I'm not going to let it like super heavily pool. Like I'm going to put it on heavy. Then I'm going to kind of follow the cracks around. The dirt over here like I'll be painting separately. So I'm going to just kind of trace it out from there. Because I'll go in afterward and paint the dirt. Again, where it's pooled, I'm just going to keep grabbing it once I run out and spread it around on my brush. We just keep pushing it out. We're going to get it down in all the little cracks where water would gather, where dirt and detritus would gather, right? We just kind of want to hit everything where it looks like you might get pooling or stuff like that. Where the, where the stuff naturally pools, we're going to mimic that. We just don't want it to be too unbelievably thick. Okay? All right. So right away, we can then, if you really want to smooth it out, you can take the brush, just rinse it off real quick so we still got a fairly wet brush. And then we can just kind of dance it around the edges there a little. Kind of blend it out some. That way we don't get any weird, harsh lines. Again, this is why I use this crappy brush, because who cares? I'm being totally ridiculously hard on that brush, but who cares? All right, so there we go. We kind of fuzzed out our edges. So then I let that dry for a minute. Now, what the basic goal here is going to be to do is going to be to get it so it looks like we have streaks and stuff gathering down. So we want to think about terms of how would water interact with this, right? Because our main source of weathering and, and aging in this process is going to be water. So when water hits this wall, where does it travel? It's going to run through the cracks and collect there. It's going to run down these recesses. It's going to gather down in these cracks. Hence why I trace these cracks along, right? So we want to focus our darker colors near the lower part here of this rock, okay? And so that's, that's what we're going to be doing here. Um, I can also, if I want to play with it, go in the opposite direction. So I can take something like the streaking medium here, this oiled earth, which is a fun product that, that the only downside to it is it separates like a just a absolute beast. Like this stuff is terrible about it. But at the same time, we can also take it and we could run streaks down. Now, obviously, like the door and this dirt, that's all going to get colored eventually, so... We're not going to worry about that too much during this video. That'll all be painted, you know, post getting all this stone done. Okay, so we can take some of this stuff, some of our streaking or grime or whatever here, our dirt. We can take some of that, and we can just start running it down. It's very light, the effect this stuff has. It's super minimal. You could also do this, like I'm just doing it with this this uh, oiled earth. You could do the same thing with seraphim sepia or something like that. But it basically gives the look. And you notice I'm just like tracing it down. Sometimes over the normal rock. Sometimes I'll follow a crack or whatever. I don't want to let it get too thick. So if I see that, I just go back and I soak up the rest up. What we're doing there is just creating the impression, you can just see, of those streaks running down, right? I can even then clean the brush. And I can just smooth that edge a little. That way it looks like it just disappears into nothing, right? Exactly as you would expect it to do as the water flows down, slowly deposits all the grime and grit in the rain, and eventually joins and pools down here where it's tinted the entire thing dark. Okay. So, now, next up. I the, the, the Agrax has not completely dried. Don't care. I'm going to grab my Ethonian Camo Shade. Okay? Now, we're going to use the Ethonian Camo Shade. What else does stone do? Well, it's going to attract things like moss and stuff like that, right? Where's that moss going to gather? Well, it's going to gather where there's liquid, right? Where there's water, life is going to bloom. So, 
what we're going to do is we're going to here, we're going to trace, again, these upper rocks where this moss would be gathering. Same thing down here with the lower cracks. We can even spread some out around. That's fine. I'm going to follow those cracks. Again, you notice I actually, you know, I'm slapping it on fairly heavy here. Not being careful. This isn't a careful process. This is a let's have some fun and slap some paint around process. Right? This isn't time for this isn't time for careful hands. Here's where we, we just like Michael Keaton in 1989 Batman, you know, we're, we're just getting nuts. Okay? Because you can't really get this wrong. The more random it is, the more just it's kind of scattered around or it or at the very least, if not random, the more it just kind of has a, a, an inelegant pattern, the more it's gonna look like actual nature. Because nature it's fairly random. It doesn't grow in any kind of organized pattern. You know, nature doesn't grow by grids or something, right? So I'm just kind of following the individual rocks there. Moving along. And there we go. So now we've worked in some of our green tones. Again, same as last time. We want to, as always, one of the last steps you can do, these shades dry rather slowly. So as always, I can just take it, push it around, with my basically clean brush, right? And I can always just smooth the edges. That way we get a nice, easy transition, okay? All right, so now I've put a bunch of stuff on. So at this point, we're gonna let it dry all the way, and then we're gonna come back and see what we're gonna do next. We'll be back. All right, and we're back. And so you can see everything is dry now, and now, We've got some great tones working in here. See, right away, we've got a lot more sort of color variants. Again, we're not trying to be, you know, uh, anything but subtle with this. Because at the scale we're working at, it's not like we need huge stuff. Plus, we can add things like flock and grasses and things like that, physical moss later to bring this out. But what we're trying to get right now is that little stuff, the stains, the color in the rock that makes it look organic, right? Um, so what I did is after everything dried, I just took a very light dry brush back of the white to bring some of that contrast back into it, especially around the edges. This time it was very, very light. Just again, just straight dry brushing. I just basically put a little on and hit it like here and here and here. Just, you know, very quick, very light touch. Okay, so now what we're gonna wanna do, we're gonna move over to our Seraphim Sepia. And, and by the way, I'm using these in a fairly random order doesn't really have to be any way you use them. There's no magical sequencing here. It's kind of whatever you like, whatever produces an effect you want. The real secret to this, in case you haven't figured it out, is just to keep going back and forth. You dry brush a little, you wash a little. You dry brush a little, you wash a little. That's why I like to work on this at the same time I'm working on the miniature, because a lot of it's just dry time and stuff like that. Now, the thing about Seraphim Sepia is it's actually a really strong color. Like it's a very strong tint in what it will do. Like you can see how much that brown stands out. So what we're gonna do here is again, this is what's gonna give us our real muddy tone. So again, we're gonna try to follow the cracks where water would live or something like that. And again, we're gonna wanna smooth out those edges. All right, cause we don't want this stark transition of the shade. So we just kind of do that. We're adding in this, this tone we're not trying to overwhelm it with it. And again, so down here on the ground, especially here on the ground, right? People would be walking over this if this door is used by whatever whatever monsters live in this place. They're walking all over here. They're tracking in muddy boot prints, stuff like that. You know how it is with goblins. They never wipe their feet. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and avoid the middle of the door because I wanna make it look like that's worn down, right? Um, like people have stepped on it enough that it's worn out. So again, then I'm gonna go ahead and just once I get all my paint off, wipe it off, and just kind of again, smooth out those edges to get that color transition nice and subtle. We don't, we're not trying to go heavy with it, right? But again, we just want some light touch of that browns. And that sepia just has such an effect because all of a sudden, all your rocks have this wonderful earthy tone where it looks like some dust and stuff like that has gathered. Now, we could stop there and we're good. 
you know, there's there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, we've got some good different tones working there. We've got overall we have a very nice uh, we have a very nice you know natural looking stone now. But we could go farther. Okay, if we wanted to. Sorry, I had to stand up because I realized I didn't have that next to me. Um, we at the same time we could go to like some pigments. Okay, so if we want to get some actual pigments in here, show some some real dust, we can go that direction too. Um, so the point is, is that you can take this again as far as you like. So let's go ahead and do some pigment here. I'm going to crack open my my pigment. Now this is a very very light pigment you can see there. Um, so this is going to have a big effect. So what I'm going to do is that wash is still a little bit uh, dry or still still a little bit wet. So I'm just going to kind of spread it around a little. I'm going to really work that pigment in. I don't want it to be too strong. And you'll notice it's going to fly everywhere because of what I'm doing here. And if you get too much, that's no problem. Just knock all the pigment off your brush, go in with a clean brush, and just really work it in there. Okay? Because we're not looking to do anything with the pigment except kind of stain some of the stone where some dirt and dust and grime have built up. And we really work that in. Now, we can set that by, we could apply another wash over top so it sets in there and that'll also stain it. So I could go back to my sepia. I could, you know, clean my brush off. Okay? I could go back to my sepia tone. And I could just very lightly hit that kind of set that in place because when it dries it'll it'll hold it in place it's got matte fixer in it you could also just use any matte medium matte varnish anything like that alcohol will set it in place basically anything that's going to activate the pigment and turn it into paint um shade has you know medium in it you could use get out your lamia medium you get anything you want whatever you like um but mixing it with a tone that you've already got on here will also help to kind of ease out if you've got a very significant pigment change, right? So there, now we've got something really interesting happening because now we've got this real nice, like, dirt color transition, right? And when we get our wood door done and our front, the dirt up here on the edge of the earth and this mud extending up here, now we're going to have some really interesting effects. We want to come in and maybe get some more up here. Maybe we want to uh, maybe we want to have a little bit of dirt that's gotten kicked up on the wall, right? The key with this is, by the way, you wouldn't normally take this pigment straight from the this thing. You could you'd probably put it out on a palette, but I don't care. I'm being quick, so who cares? It doesn't really matter in case you noticed. The key is more working it in, not how you do it. Okay. So again, we'll wipe it off. It's a little. A little harsh right there, right? So we're going to just rub it, rub it, rub it. You could also go in with like a Q-tip if you don't want to ruin a brush. But like I said, this is my brush to be ruined. So who cares? Just spread it around there, right? Go back into my wash a little bit. Just spread the slightest layer of that around so that way we can activate that pigment and get that set in there. And there we go. So now we've got a nice frame of that color sort of around the door, and that should work very well. The point is you can keep going with this as much as you like. Work in those colors. You can even use a little bit of purple tones, a little reds. Let's, uh, let's get a little red into this. You might say, well, how does red exist in, in something so natural? Well, red exists everywhere because red is basically the color of light, but in addition, we're going to take a little bit of this crimson. Now, in this case, this is this Karienberg crimson. This is a really, really crimson color. In this case, I'm going to take a little of it. I'm going to go onto my palette first because I don't want this straight out of the pot. It's a little strong. Instead, I'm going to go into my water. And I'm going to just thin it out some. You could also use some medium, stuff like that. It's fine. And just very lightly, 
I'm going to touch some of these rocks in here. Again, I'm not going to have a huge effect. This is about slight, slight tonal variation existing. You don't notice it when you look at it unless you really stare, but your brain does because it catches these little hints of these other colors being spread across and it makes it so much more visually interesting. Okay. It also plays with that pigment and that set. So again, just these little minor touches can make a big deal on your overall rock. And you can see there, I put that crimson directly on, didn't turn my door red, or my, my scene here red, just added some slight variation to the color of it. So there you go. That's making natural weathered stone. Um, you could, as I said, you could keep doing this as much as you want. I could, right now, I could go and I could dry brush over on some layers of this back to a white or an off-white or something like that. And then I could do some more washes put on some, and stuff like that. You can keep going back and forth to just increase it. The key with doing very natural organic things is to just have layer after layer after layer after layer. And I don't mean that in the traditional layering sense. I mean lots of different variation of stippled paint, of washed paint, of dry brushed paint to create this very random organic pattern because that's how nature is. So taking it down that road is how you get that very natural organic pattern. So there you go. I hope that's helpful for you. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, give it a like if you did like it. And uh, as always, we'll see you next time.